Support Candy. It's a great name for a company. So if you're looking for a help desk solution to go on your WordPress website, I've tried them all, I think. Um, mainly the free ones, looking at something that I could just plug in, people could leave a ticket, contact me if they have an issue, and uh, I can see the tickets. Um, I want the ability to be able to attach screenshots and things into the tickets, enter rich text, and that it integrates with email, so it will email them when a ticket is replied to, um, and all that stuff. And looking around, I found Support Candy. I've been using this for about 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 a year now. It's uh, it's download it for free, but then if you want to extend it with various plugins, it costs a little bit of money. I'm talking like tens of dollars, not hundreds. So I typically download Support Candy and then use a couple of the add-ons. You can see here from the add-ons on their website, they have a really nice WooCommerce integration. They have canned replies that are free, you know, so you can set up your standard replies for commonly asked questions. Um, and you can integrate with Gravity Forms. That's a whole nother subject. I've done that on one of the websites. So what does Support Candy look like? Let's look on um, one of my websites that's running it. So if we look on the Software Projects website, it's very simple. You see that it's Ajax. When something there's, in fact, there's no tickets on this one. So let's go and let's look at a live example. We're going to look at Projects Academy. <clears throat> I'm not going to share any personal information, but you can see it in action. So Projects Academy is an online project management um, website. Uh, I work on this in partnership with my uncle. He's uh, a project management instructor. He runs all the courses, records everything, and I just do the tech. I run the website and keep it up and running. Now, uh, here I am logged into the website, but it makes no difference. So just like you know, your average punter out there comes along and they want to go to the help desk or support system. When they click on it, it takes them to this page. Now, I am going to see all the tickets because I'm an admin. What they would see is just their tickets. When you log in, you just see the tickets that you've been putting on the system, which is pretty neat. And here's all that here's all the tickets that are being entered. And at any time, I can uh, in fact <clears throat> let's click on one. It's assigned to me. So here's a ticket. I can just page up and down. This chap is saying that he's working on one of the projects, and uh, I offered him a, a freebie upgrade. We had a conversation in the ticket system, um, and then I can close the ticket when it's all done. It works pretty neat, huh? So let's have a look at it in action on another page. I've just installed this on uh, the Software Projects website, so there are no tickets here. This is the admin view. Um, the plugin itself, you upload and install just like you do all other plugins. And when you go to add new, you're gonna try support candy. Here it is, this one with the hand and the big green ball. I would definitely say download it, install it, um, there's lots of things in this space and I've tried them all. The WP Support Plus was pretty good, but I had problems with it. The user registration, not really a support system. Um, so install Support Candy and activate it. Here's the main Support Candy plugin, oops, Support Candy plugin itself. And here's some of the free ones, the extensions that I've added after installing Support Candy. Uh, automatic close ticket this is very nice if someone raises a, a support ticket quite often someone will come in and raise a ticket asking questions you reply and ticket just sits there open forever so with auto close I say right if I've replied to a user and they haven't got back to me in seven days 14 days 30 days it will automatically just close that ticket and it's marked as status closed the canned reply is a neat feature for those common questions um, FAQ integration um, I use a, a, an FAQ plugin called Ultimate FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. Um, and it's quite nice because it will link tickets to an FAQ. So someone can be reading an FAQ and ask a ticket about it. So on the ticket itself, you'll see a link to the FAQ that they're asking the question about. The Su I'll just jump down to the bottom here. The Support Candy WooCommerce does the exact same thing. When a user, um, if they're buying digital products, for example, when they log in and, and raise a ticket on the system, 
it will have a link directly to that user's account in WooCommerce, directly to the orders that that user has placed. So if they're buying anything off your site and they've raised a support ticket, you can jump straight to that order. So, you know, if they're asking for a refund or a discount or a coupon code, click it straight there. It's just a really nice productivity enhancement. Um, private credentials. This allows you and the user to have a conversation attaching details to the ticket. Private credentials completely encrypts it. So if they want to upload a screenshot or perhaps put uh, credit card information or anything that's completely secure, they don't want anyone else to see, private credentials gives you that uh, ultimate privacy plugin for those tickets. You can set up Support Candy to have your tickets public so everyone can see them. You can even set it up so that other users on the website can reply to each other's tickets. Someone goes on there, hey, how do I download X, Y, Z? And uh, another user can see that ticket, much like a forum, and reply to it. Or, which is the way that I do it, I mostly put it up so just the person submitting the ticket can see their ticket, and of course us on the admin side for the website. Support Candy Reports just gives me various reports so I can say how many, how many tickets were opened this month, closed this month, responded to, what was my average response time, that kind of stuff. Now, this is an interesting plugin, Support Candy Reset plugin. I just had this. Um, one of the features I've requested of their, their, their team, when you go to the Support Candy website, they actually, any questions that you have with them is you end up raising a ticket. And here is me raising a ticket saying, hey, I've had a problem. I've been uninstalling, installing, playing with this, this support candy, and I've managed to break it. <laughs> so over on um, my Nick Litton website, as I've just recently, as you're reading this, expanded that to include these courses, I've managed to completely break support candy. I was playing around with support agents and custom fields and trying to add things and link to courses. This is what I'm seeing for my, my support tickets. Look. I see lots of tickets in here, but there's no text on them um, because I tried renaming the header as opposed to the body. I can select them, but I can't see anything. Basically, it's, it's broken. The custom fields are wrong. It shows me that I've got 11 old tickets. This is because I had this installed two years ago, and then I removed it and tried some other different support systems before finally looping back and going, no, support candy gives me exactly what I need. So I've broken support candy. <clears throat> and natively, at the time of recording this, there is no way of like resetting the system to say uh, reset and install. So I left it to get, and quite nicely what they said was, hey, here is a little plugin called support candy reset. Download it, install it, go to reset, click it, and everything will be back to, back to scratch. So um, why don't I do that? Okay, let's do that live right now. Is I'm going to upload my reset, which I've just got from their support. If you've managed to completely break your support candy install, um, leave me a ticket on the support system. The help desk link is down the bottom of the page. And perhaps I can send you this reset plugin. Once you've installed the reset plugin, there he is, activated. Now, when I go to my support link, here's all of my support tickets. What you can see on here, we now have this new uh, menu option called Reset Support Candy. As this is my Nick Litton website and I'm not using it, I'm going to reset it. So, when I press Enter on here, this should give me a fresh, clean install, just like you will have seen when you've installed Support Candy for the first time. Done. Pretty easy. So let's go and have a look at what tickets I've got. So the first thing it's going to tell me is I haven't got any tickets. My website is slow because I use a cheap web host. <laughs> Actually, it's because my server's overloaded with all kinds of stuff right now. No tickets found. You can look at the filters, you know, unresolved, unassigned. You can look at agent settings. You can assign different users on your website to be agents. All of the options in here are really intuitive. I don't need to go through them with you. You can look at the support agents that you've got to find. I've got myself as a support agent. That means I can answer and respond. You can add custom fields to the tickets if you wanted to add extra information or ask different things from them. Mine are all pretty obvious. I'm setting by default the name, address, subject, description, category, a priority. I kind of don't like this because everyone's ticket is high priority, but I leave it on there nonetheless. Um, the product that they're referring to, so in, in my case, 
if you're referring to a particular course you could put that course in there um, email notifications this is kind of important when you set it up this is what the person sees when they raise a ticket they get sent an email from the website so it says who's it from so I like to say it's from Nick Litton support and what's the uh, address for this in, in my case I, I put my email in right so they'll when they enter a ticket on the system they'll get an automatically generated email that will say it's from Nick Litton support Nick at Nick .com. that's my email now they can either reply via email that will come into my Gmail and I can respond um, or they can reply and they see it on the website what I tend to do is whenever I get a personal email about a ticket I will just click the link go straight to the support system and reply in there because I mean, we've always got the history in one place you can change the uh, appearance of how things look for individual ticket lists and change your colors and layouts and all that stuff um, and of course the, the other settings all kinds of settings that you have about categories that you're going to have for tickets here it says what's the page where you're going to have the short code which is square bracket support candy square bracket to integrate it on it I've got a page called help desk you see down here you have got your default login information so what this means is if I look at my let me have a look at one of my pages right If I go to my help desk page here's my help desk you see it's bringing up the support candy thing straight away this is what the users are going to see their tickets they're on the page itself when you create a page call it whatever you like support I like help desk which is what I'm using on this this uh, website um, all I'm having there don't worry about that PHP error that's a side effect of PHP 8.0 which I just upgraded to so here's my page itself blah 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 welcome leave something and this short code square brackets support candy is what installs that support ticket system so uh, yeah that's the actual page itself really simple to integrate now if I look at that page because I'm logged into this website <clears throat> I see the admin settings so what do I see if I'm not in logged into the website let's open a different browser let's open Firefox now if I go to my website in Firefox I don't believe I'm logged in through this browser oh it's a complete lie I am logged in through this browser so let me log out shall I my website says are you sure you want to log out uh, yes I do so in this Firefox browser session I'm now looking like an average punter who comes along to the website they come along they're looking at this waffle and they're going what the hell is this guy talking about I want to ask a question so when they go to the help desk page the support candy short code brings up the help desk now the first thing it says in this particular page is I'm not allowing users to leave tickets unless they're registered registration is free so let's look at this and go right so they'll force them to sign in before they leave a ticket I kind of don't like that right why don't I let them be guests and leave tickets so if I come back into my main page here let's go into the um, support candy settings uh, let's figure this out so ticket categories I'm gonna do all this real time if we look at general Look at the general under the tickets. The default status is open. I'm general. I'm low. Waiting replies all makes makes sense, right? Uh, format tickets. Who am I going to allow to create new tickets? Administers, agents, customers, and guests. The default login on the support page. I can send them to um, my main login page, or I can do the integrated candy login form. That's the integrated one user registration is disabled I'm gonna allow people to register on this page I don't mind you registering you can be registered on the website and log in if you want you won't have access to the courses till you buy them um, but yeah having default user registration is pretty neat and how do you want to do it Do you want to have the default WordPress registration or a custom registration let's have a look at them both and see what the options are if I leave it on support candy registration and save the changes if I do a refresh so what I'm expecting now is the ability to leave a ticket as a guest 
Ah, there we go. Here's my nice page already set up. So I, again, I can sign in, I can register using support candy registration, or I can continue as a guest. If I try to register now, here is the support candy. Give me the details for registration to sign up. So let me go back. I think I want to use the um, regular oh, regular sign up through WordPress. So user registration I'll enable, but I'm going to use the WordPress default registration. I think that'll take us to my account page where I've done some programming for the WooCommerce plugin. So let's have a look. It's a nice recording a lesson when I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, here's the same page. We've still got enabling for guests. Let's register now. Where's it going to take us? Okay, this is taking us to the WordPress registration page. Uh, asking for a name and an email. Maybe I don't like this as much as the support candy one. I could make some um, programming. I could create a registration page if I wanted to. Oops. I could enter a registration page and take them there. Um, I'm not going to. So for my example, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I'm just going to keep the support candy registration. I like that. So regular login form, I'm enabling guests, and I've got support candy registration. So when someone comes to this main page, they can either log in to, leave a t to look at the tickets they've left previously. They can register now, which takes them to the support candy registration. I quite like that. It's nice and simple or they can continue as a guest. So let's continue as a guest and pretend that I'm leaving a ticket. Here we go. Who am I? I'm Nick, the guest, the gurst. Nick at nick.com. Testing something. Um, typo, typo, typo. And of course the guest can then say, you know, here's my general thing. Um, these are the courses that I've got set up. So, you know, it might be a question about one of these courses so they can select one of them or they can leave it blank. It's up to them. Recapture is something else that's turned on during the settings. So you can say to help hopefully stop some of the spam coming to your blog website and you can submit a ticket. So the guest sees this message telling them here's a link to that ticket that they're working on. Um, and they can then come back and check that ticket whenever they like. So, you know, they've submitted this ticket. An hour later, he's saying, I wonder if anyone's um, answered this ticket. I'm going to click on it and see what's going on. Takes them into the ticket. Here's my guest link. And here's the ticket that I entered. Here was, here was my blistering description of my error, typo, typo. And it would show the response from the admin people. Now, let me flick back into my original browser. So if I go into my main browser and look at my support tickets now, I expect to see one ticket from a chap called Nick the Guest. Oh, there he is. Nick the Guest, one ticket, status is open, he's testing something. So here's some bloke on the internet who's left a message for me to answer. So what I would normally do, just my way of using support candy, is I go in and assign the agent so if you've got multiple people responding to tickets, you want one person to be owning that ticket. So I'm going to sign myself. And enter a reply in here. How can I help? Or, you know, whatever your reply is. If I had selected um, a WooCommerce order or a recipient detail or a course detail, that would be shown in the extra boxes down on the right hand side. So I'm going to sub submit that reply. I could create some canned replies, you know, for the standard questions, or I can add a note. If I add a note, then it just appears on the ticket itself rather than being sent to the customer. But in this case, I'm going to say, there's my reply. So you can pretty see, it's a bit confusing because it's me and me, right? But you can see Nick, Nick the guest leaving the question, there's me replying. You would normally have different avatars. By default, it pulls the avatar in from Gravatar. Meanwhile, back on the other land, that user, Nick the Guest, will have received an email against the email account that he entered saying that I've answered his ticket with a link in here, and here's me answering ticket systems. I don't need to go through, don't need to labor the details of that any more. De anymore. So that being said, I am going to labor something just a little bit more. Ow. It might um, bear looking at some of the settings for these additional plugins that I mentioned. 
Um, again, so go to your admin desk, click on the support on the left hand side. And if you go down to the settings, you can see the general settings that we were playing with earlier on. This is all your sign on attributes and default statuses. The obvious ones, you know, the categories, the statuses, the priorities, the open ticket widget. The thank you page is what's displayed after the user submits a ticket. You can change this text to say whatever you like, or you can take them to a specific page on your website so you can have anything on that page. Cron settings, I leave this as default so it runs the background tasks when the website runs its back down tasks. This is the secure attachments I was talking about. You can set attachment size, you can say what the users can attach. Um, and you can have a notice that when they attach things it says warning you're about to attach something um, if you're in the EU where Big Brother is watching you you can turn on the terms and conditions and GDPR rights you know so when they log in they gotta click a checkbox to say yes I agree I generally have this stuff turned off because of course we agree that's why we're losing leaving a ticket this politically correct world of nonsense drives me nuts um, advanced settings what have we got in here yeah here we can see that we can allow people to be public public mode disable only you can see your ticket if you say enable everyone that goes to the help desk will see all the tickets you might want that you can also allow um, owners to be notified or not um, you can have a default refresh when you're looking at the ticket list so they're they're plopped up you can have ticket numbers, you know, starting IDs. So if you first turn your tickets on, you don't want to make out that you've freshly launched this website, put in, you know, ticket number 1,255 or whatever. And the first ticket will have a higher number. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, register user upon creating a ticket. So if it's a guest user, you can get them to register an account with their username and password when they do it. This is one of the plugins. Lots of these options appear extra depending on the plugin. So auto delete closed tickets I really like. If you want to do some cleanup. Um, I have mine disabled because I like to see the tickets there even when they're closed so I can go back in time. Uh, you've got a date picker you can put for dates. The capture we saw earlier on on the screen. By default it allows the capture. We can also add a capture to login forms and registration forms as a part of support candy uh, rest api's this is for if you're writing external hooks coming in to do things we're not i'm not doing that tiny mce is the uh, text editor that we're entering the text into i'm a fan of gutenberg blocks the standard thing in wordpress i seem to be in a minority but i like it so i personally wish it didn't have tiny mce i wish it had a gutenberg block type editor but Tiny MC is the old standard, the gold, old gold standard, and it works pretty nicely. Again, you can change some of the attributes there, right? Auto close ticket. This appears if you've got the auto close ticket plugin done. So let's say that if we've got a ticket that's um, awaiting a customer reply and hasn't, they haven't replied to us in 14 days, then close the ticket. Seems fair, right? private credentials this is what I was talking about you can say whether you want to allow people to look at private information you can have a conversation and, and make a, a secure upload and download area FAQ integration if you're using it ultimate fact then this in, this integrates I am using it I don't know what a Chronix FAQ is obviously some other plugin you can use that if you want and WooCommerce I really like this the way that it, in, it in links them together is really useful just to have a look at a ticket and it will actually show you this user is referring to this product number and you click on it, it takes you there. All very standard stuff. Um, oh yeah, this is quite nice. If you enable the Woo dashboard as the ticket URL, when the user goes to my account, which if you're using the WooCommerce my account shortcode, they'll actually see the tickets that they've raised in the support system at the bottom of the screen. That's neat in itself. Um, yeah, and if you pay for it, then this is where you enter your license code. I have paid for it, so I need to go and paste in all of my licenses here. Side note, when you run the reset, which is what I did, it wipes out your uh, license codes. 
So all in all, Support Candy, probably my favorite. It's of the support systems for WordPress. It's simple, it looks good, it does what it says it should do. Um, their support team are very responsive if you have issues like I had. And uh, yeah, I hope you download it, enjoy it, and hope it works for you. That is that. I'm going to go away and do something completely different instead.